All right, this is take two. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the US. And today is, let's see, Wednesday, August 31st at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm broadcasting to you live. All right, we're gonna cross our fingers that this time it works. <laughs> Thank you for joining in if you found me again. Uh, Facebook people, I hope you can find me to the link. Yeah, crazy, craziness today, I guess. Anyways, um, today I am going to share with you a fun little belly band idea for one of the boxes um, that we have in the Stampin' Up! collection called the Craft Gift Boxes. And right now, through the end of today, through the end of of celebration you'll be able to get these boxes as a free bonus um like a free add-on to a 50 dollars plus order so <laughs> and on that note uh thank you <laughs> thank you you guys you're so sweet your comments so what happened for those of you that are watching this um without watching the other one i went live obviously internet issues and we got cut off so we're starting over this is take two um I went into a little detail about my hair too. My hair is different. Um, I'm actually going through a process right now where it's falling out, breaking off. Um, I'm seeing a dermatologist and in fact, I am even going to be seeing a dermatologist at the Mayo Clinic. We are trying to figure this out, but um, gosh, hair loss comes in all different Re for all different reasons and I am losing it and so I'm trying not to curl it and I, we're just going with the natural look you guys it is straight I'm just gonna wear it the way it is because you know what that's that's life right um, but going back to crafting uh, we are going to get into Christmas today uh, the reason why is because as paper crafters we know that Christmas comes really quickly for all of us who create for Christmas whether it's Christmas cards Christmas gifts or whatever so in fact, any of the holidays that are coming up, we should be working on that stuff now. End of August, you know, summertime or whatever. And we're already starting September tomorrow. So um, let's get on the ball and let's start our paper crafting for the holidays. Let's see here. If you are live with me, um, thank you for coming back, first of all. And also a big welcome to Trisha Josephs and Lisa Marshall. Trisha Josephs is my moderator on YouTube. She is the one who is checking comments, answering questions, helping you out um, in that location during the live broadcast. And if you're watching um, on Facebook during the live, Lisa Marshall is there. Trisha, Trisha's name sh uh, shows up a little bit more because um, they put a wrench symbol next to her name uh, on YouTube, but Lisa's name does not stand out. So if you are um, trying to get a hold of Lisa, she just has to read through comments and find you. Um, sorry about that, Lisa. You're so good to me. <laughs> and then uh, Trisha, you can tag her. You can just put the at sign, the A with a circle around it, and then start typing her name, T-R-I-C-I-A. It should pop up. You can click on her and then you can ask away. So... All right, um, let's go to the desktop real quick. We'll do that first. This is the box that we're going to make. It's about six and a half inches by a little over four and a half inches um, and then three quarters of an inch tall. I make fudge every year for Christmas, so I'm thinking this will be fun to add some um, fudge into. Now, it's not a food safe container. I mean, it's it's safe, but it's not like they, it doesn't have the coating on it like some of our boxes do. And so you'll wanna wrap up your candies or treats or whatever so that you don't have any um, food, you know, that would seep onto the box or whatever. So it can also hold cards. So if you have cards, and I'm sure I have a card sitting around somewhere. Ah, here we go. We have, we have a card from the paper pumpkin kit. Um, so you have cards and envelopes that would fit into there if you wanted to give away cards. Um, so you could do that as your gift. And then we also have words that are other than the sweet Christmas. So the stamp set that we're gonna be using is called Sweet Gingerbread, but you could decorate these craft boxes in different ways. Also within that stamp set, we have Sending Love. That would work with cards um, from our home to yours. So you can put things in there other than food. 
This is the set of dies that goes with the Sweet Gingerbread stamp set. So you can see you can die cut around most of those images and build up your little gingerbread uh, uh, type house, okay? Uh, these are <laughs> these are the craft boxes. One of my neighbors just popped in to say hello. Who was that? Someone said, hi from your neighbor. Who was that? <laughs> or maybe, anyways, I'll try to, I'll try to read them later. <laughs> Say it again. Oh, popcorn. Lisa, that's a great idea. Thank you. Lisa says popcorn fits in there too, like those bags of popcorn. So, and yes, I've heard about the COVID vaccination is causing hair loss, but I also went through menopause recently. Um, I've always had thin hair and my dermatologist that I saw through a different system, she says that I probably have always had alopecia. Anyways, um, we're trying to figure it out. So... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Louise. All right, so then we've got craft gift box, boxes. You get a set of 10 of these. Now, if you're watching this after August, you can still get these boxes. These are boxes that you can purchase from the Stampin' Up! store, but you can also earn them from free for free through today with a $50 order. I think you get a set, yeah, a set of 10, and I want to say they're around $10, but I'm not sure. Let's go to the supply list on my computer screen here let me pop that up and now you can see all the supplies all the measurements um, this particular pdf by the way will be downloadable when the blog post goes live at 12 15 central time so in a little less than an hour you'll be able to click on my blog post link which is in the description right now of my youtube video i haven't gotten it in the description of the facebook video yet but i will when you click on that link, you can go to um, the blog post and you'll be able to download this. It will include, of course, the measurements, the supplies, and those supplies are clickable. So do you see where it says craft gift boxes twice in the supplies right down in here? That's because one of them is the free item and one of them, thank you, they confirmed who was that, Lisa, thank you, um, $10. And then the other, um, other one is free. So... Um, but they should both be clickable. Okay, not a lot of scoring because we're doing a lot of piecing together of, of things to, to build that little house. So let's now move down to the desktop. In fact, I'm going to zoom in just a tad here. So you can see here's the belly band. It's made with our 8.5 by 11 cardstock, but because this is 6.5, plus a little bit more, let's just call that seven and a half, seven and a half times two, gosh, that would be like almost 15 inches, right? So we don't have 15 inch paper, even if we used our 12 inch paper. So our belly band is actually made up of two pieces of cardstock, okay? All right, so let's bring in our paper trimmer and we're gonna set up that, that um, strip. So this is our one and a half inch strip um, by 11 inches. I just trimmed it off of the side of a piece of 11 and a half by eight and a half cardstock. And what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to put a little score mark in it and I'm going to score it. And it says in the directions to score it at one and a half and two and a quarter inches from each end. But I'm going to suggest that you just score it at the two and a quarter or one and a half inch at one end and the reason why is because sometimes there's a fraction of an inch so I did that here at the two and a quarter sometimes there's a fraction of an inch off when you're wrapping your belly band around it especially if you filled this with a gift maybe the gift has a little bit more mm, density to it and it doesn't close quite as fully as it would if it was empty so your belly band goes on after you've filled your box I'm going to slide this off here, slide it off in this direction, I guess. Um, and when we fill our box, that's when you actually want to do the wrapping because it, again, could be a difference between a 16th of an inch um, or a 32nd of an inch, and you want to have a nice snug fit. So I'm just going to, by hand, wrap that. And then I can do this on the same side here. I can wrap it and wrap it. But if you measure those score lines that I've just created by hand, you'll know that they're about one and a half by two and a quarter. Hello, Rebecca from Oshkosh. I love saying that name, by the way. When my kids were little, they had that clothing 
brand. Is that Oshkosh Bagash or whatever? Anyways, fun. Oshkosh. <laughs> all right, so then we'll just go ahead and we'll crease all of these score lines that we just created just to make sure that they're nice and crisp. Okay, so you can see the belly band doesn't come together all the way. So we need to have another piece. And I think it's best for, you know, seam, hiding seams and stuff, if we just have a piece going straight across the back. And that piece is going to be slightly under six and a half inches. Well, how do we do the six and a half inch piece with this trimmer? We have an arm on the trimmer that you just pull out. So we're going to pull that arm out, lift up this piece here, and we're going to bring it to six and a half inches. And then we're going to go back one sixteenth of an inch. Okay. So far, are we still going? Are we still live? I hope so. Nobody said frozen yet, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and slice that. That is our six and a half ish, a little under, by one and a half inch piece. And those will layer together like that to create the full belly band. All right. We also need a piece of beautiful snowflake. What is this called? Snowflake specialty. Uh, yes, Snowflake Specialty Vellum. Okay, thanks Mary Jo. <laughs> I'm trying to love it. <laughs> she commented on my hair. You know, I'm so used to a, a look that I've had my whole adult life. And then when it does this, it's, it's tough. It's tough. But we're just going to, you know, if I have to shave it all off and wear wigs or not even wear wigs, just go bald. You guys will still love me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. All right, so this is the specialty vellum. It is fun because there are three sheets that are iridescent y, you know, um, kind of that, um, I don't know, multicolor foil color look, right? So you can see purples and blues and greens in there. Um, and then we have the ones that are flocked vellum. So you can feel the softness. It's kind of like. Um, little I don't know velvet <laughs> it feels like velvet right so and I've used up a couple of these sheets already you get one sheet of each they're 12 by 12 and I've made several of these boxes because I have club members and I gifted them each one of these boxes so we're gonna go ahead and uh, cut down a piece that is six inches you know what I think let me see which one I used on this box I think I used, I'm going to use this one instead because I think I used the other one. So we're going to use this one on it just to show you the difference and trim it from this end. It looks a little like there's the corner on the other side was a little bit beat up. So we're going to go ahead and cut here at one and a half inches. We're doing the same height as this piece here. So this is going to be one and a half. And now that will go on top of our belly band on the front. Isn't that fun, Bellum? I love it. Okay, we also going to be we're also going to be using um, a cardstock that you may not even know that we have. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> you guys are being so sweet to me. Thanks. All right. Well, it's real, right? We go through changes. You, you, and those of you that have watched my videos for gosh, how long have I I've been on? I've been on since two thousand thirteen. So almost 10 years. I mean, there's a huge difference in just like the way my hands have changed. <laughs> so might as well have hair changes. This is our craft card stock. And there is a slight difference between one side and another. You can't really see it in the camera. Oh, there you can. Um, one side seems a little bit darker. Um, there's also a slight curvature to it. So you'll want to keep that in mind when working with it. When I pulled it out of the baggy and off of the car cardboard backing, it, it likes to curve in one direction. That obviously means that the grain is, is kind of running this way dominantly. Um, so when you're, when you're scoring this way, you, you break more fibers than if you go score in that way. I mean, that has nothing to do with the project we're doing today, but I just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> uh, a Demi Moore look. Mm. Yes, well, I actually woke up this morning think, thinking about the different hairstyles I, I could do. Um, Will Smith's wife. I could totally do that though too. So, <laughs> and yes, thyroid. I know I've listed it all. You guys, um, looked into lots of different things. So we're just gonna, but yeah, menopause is when it started really going wacko on me. 
All right, so we need a bit of this, and I've already got a smaller piece, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my die cutting with that. I've also got some scraps of white that I've just pulled out of my bin. So we're gonna take those pieces and we're gonna start our die cutting. And you know what, before we start our die cutting, let us do some stamping on the box because the box itself needs to have these little pearls on here and those pearls are not done with just regular stick-on kind of pearls. Okay, now I wanna mention that the um, pearls that I'm going to create for you with the pearlized enamel effects can get smushed. So if you, um, you know, have a bunch of these boxes stacked on top of each other, it can, it can smush the little pearls. If you mail the box, um, it can get smushed unless you're using um, uh, a bubble mailer or something. But we are hand giving the, these is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. Otherwise, you could just use the regular, um, the regular pearls but you're gonna go through those pretty quickly if you're making multiple boxes. The pearlized enamel effects allows you to get a ton of pearls uh, for super cheap if you're willing to risk that they will, they might get smushed on you. And they don't get smushed all the way, but they get smushed enough where they're not as pearly looking, right? Okay, let us move some of this stuff. That can become a scrap. Okay, I think we're ready. So we want to stamp this image, and this is a fun one. This comes from this part that you would do like underneath the house maybe to, to add kind of a frosting little layer underneath the house. Because again, this is a gingerbread set. So we're going to add some chocolate frosting to our box. All right, we're going to go ahead and ink up our stamp. It's photopolymer. We can see right through it. And I just gave it a crease here just so I could make sure that that area stood out. But you can see the creases as you work with them. And we're just going to hover over the top of each corner and stamp our little fun design here. I'm seeing comments coming through you guys that are so sweet and kind and caring. And I've also noticed that a couple of you are um, saying your, your caring words to another person too. I am definitely going to have to read back on those and see that stuff. So, um, oh, I also joined a support group on Facebook for thin and thinning hair. Um, uh, so that has been giving me lots of thoughts too. So I think if you were here with me last Last week, I even talked about, oh, I know what it was. It was in a video where I shared a bunch of cards on Facebook. And some of you were telling me um, a support group would be nice. Anyways, I looked for one and found one. Okay, what does the box measure flat? I saw that question. Um, it measures eight by 11 and a half. Okay. Now you could fold it if you wanted to mail it flat and it would fit into a five and a half um, by seven and a half inch envelope, oh, six by nine, that's what I, I, I've got one of those at home. Six by, six by eight, so six by nine, it would fit in a six by nine envelope. Okay, now what we wanna do is take the pearlized enamel effects. So that's this, and you get three colors in there. You get black, red, and white. This is what they look like against white. I'm gonna zoom in instead of bringing this up to the camera. So it's more like a gray and a pinkish red and then the white, which is very pearl looking. Against black cardstock, the red looks a little bit redder, not so pink. Um, this looks like a lighter gray and then you have more of a silvery white. So just so you know, um, it kind of takes on the color of the cardstock underneath a bit. Okay. All right. So then we're just going to go ahead and squeeze it out onto that little spot and it's it's going to feel like you're working with frosting those of you that decorate cakes you want to come straight up and kind of have that little tip come upward you know when you're doing your your frosting just let it come up and and it'll eventually sink back into the the little puddle there and it creates a pearl so we're going to set that aside to dry 
Now let's take our scraps and we want to create these pieces here. We need to cut out our house. Um, we need to stamp our sentiment for our tag. We need to do a tree, doors, windows. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the scraps that are smaller and we're just gonna start stamping away. I'm using Real Red, Real Red ink for our door and our windows. So let me pull those in. The nice thing about the windows um, is that you have your windows spaced out from each other. So if you wanted to, so they're on the same stamp, if you wanted to, you could actually stamp them and die cut them from the house. Because um, the dies, well, they would be, no, how would I do that? Oh, I know what, it, what I wanted to say. So you can stamp this image. That's what I wanted to say. You can stamp this image. This is the outline. And then you can stamp this in between those two window areas um, at the same time so that you're not stamping your windows separately. So I thought that was kind of cool about the window stamps. So we'll stamp those down. I've got those to die cut. This is going to go onto the house. We don't need that one yet. Oh, we want to do the wreath. The wreath we're going to do in green. So we'll grab our green ink. We're using garden green ink. Hey Kay, glad you could join in. And I think I'm going to stamp the wreath onto this one. I'm trying to use up scraps, right? And then we need our tree. Where did our tree go? Here it is. And we're going to put this tree outside the house. Okay, there's our tree. All right, let's do one more. Let's punch. Oh, <laughs> that was going to be for my, I have another one. I knew I was going to do that. That's why I cut another one. This is for our tag for the top of our box. This measures two and a quarter or two, two and a half. Two and a half by one. And let's punch that first with our banners. Pick a punch. And what I did is I opened up this little button on the bottom. And that releases it so you can punch it. This is the end that you put the paper in though. So we're going to slip that into this side here. Push it all the way to the back. Then we're going to flip it over and make sure it's straight in there. And we'll punch it down. And that will punch a little banner on the end there. And we'll use our words to stamp with our early espresso ink. So we're coming back to our chocolate colored ink. And we're going to stamp the words. Oh, did I just, oh, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to stamp the words in here. Close to the right side. Because this part is going to be tucked underneath our house. And I really did not get that straight, but we're going to go with it. Okay, so let's start die cutting. We need to die cut those. We need to die cut the roof of the house. I think we'll do that out of this piece here. And then we need to die cut our actual house. So let's bring in, let's bring in that big machine. I need to close up my ink pads. Do you guys ever get your um, papers accidentally set down onto open ink pads? Close up those ink pads, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a bit, make sure we have room for this die cutting machine to be seen. So you can watch the process. That looks good. So I've got our platform on the bottom, die adapter next, and then we've got our, our mats here. We've got our scratchier of the two on the bottom because that's the, I'm gonna position my dies so that they're facing down. You can position them the other way, but it's just kind of harder to see where they're going when you position them the other way. Um, it does give a deeper cut if you can position your die uh, blades upwards. Um, so I don't know if I even fixed the problem, Jill. She goes, glad you fixed the problem. It's just working right now. And we're going to pray that it keeps on going. Okay. Wouldn't that be funny if right at the end, I think that happened last week. Was it right at the end where all of a sudden I was kicked off the internet again? So my husband is the one who, um, who deals with our internet issues. He talks to the people at Comcast for, for us and, 
And um, so I'm hoping that this will get Comcast to help us out a little bit more. We've just had this internet issue a couple of times here. And I believe, I think it's on our end, which is sad because we pay for the highest internet. Um, yeah, and it still does this. Okay, let's get our windows in there. So I am putting sticky notes over the tops of these pieces. If you have a magnetic cutting plate, you can definitely use that. Um, we used to have that and we no longer carry it because it was having issues for some. Now my magnetic cutting plate is intact, but I like to show what people can get and if you can't get it, I don't want to show it. So I show you the other ways that you can make do. Sticky notes work. Okay. Hey, Ellen. <laughs> Maybe it was you that said that earlier. I caught the word neighbor. Hey, neighbor. So Ellen's in Wisconsin. So yes, you're pretty close by. All right, we have a window. It's so fun to die cut guys this is I don't know it's fun to see all the little pieces that you can get isn't that fun there's another window here's our door now do you see how these these um, sticky notes these post-it notes have not been ruined so I can use them again I'll just set them right there peel them off carefully because you can tear your paper with these things sometimes they get really really strong Okay, there's our door, here's our wreath, and I'm going to set these back onto my magnet sheet. The magnet sheets, by the way, I get those at Stampin' Storage. Um, it is a company that has lots of great organizational pieces for your craft room. I have a bunch of their stuff behind me that holds my ink pads, my punches, my ribbons. Um, my gosh my blends markers all kinds of stuff I do love their their stuff okay we're gonna go ahead and hold that in place on that one but this one we don't necessarily have to hold in place because it's okay if it shifts it's not lining up with a stamp image and then we need our house right so let's grab our craft scrap and we'll put that on there Set it all in and crank it through. So, hi Diane. <laughs> painter's tape works too. Yes, the blue tape, painter's tape. Um, uh, I've heard of the green one. Is there, isn't there a green one too that a lot of crafters like to use? Anyways, yes, you can use, you can use, and I think there's a lot of companies out there that sell tape for masking so that you don't rip your paper when you peel it up. So there's our house, there's our tree, there's our roof, which has snow or frosting. Set those back in there and we'll just set that off to the catch-all table. Yay for the catch-all table. All right, let me throw away my scraps here. Bring all of these pieces back in. Now the first thing that I did is I lined up the house, the roof of the house um, with the house so that we can glue that on because everything else kind of goes from there. So we're gonna go ahead and just put a little thin line of glue and I'm using my, I'm sorry, I'm not in the camera. I'm using my little applicator with the fine tip that I have purchased from Amazon. You can find this in my favorite extras section when you go to my blog and you click on the shop tab, it gives you choices. And in that shop um, menu or whatever, the drop down menu, you can see favorite things or favorite extras. I think that's what it's called. So we'll glue that to the top of the house. And now we're going to stamp the, um, let's stamp the, let's stamp the door and windows next. This is so relaxing. This is just basic stamping. I mean, there's a little bit of die cutting to it, but it's stamping 
and and just assembling. I mean, it's really easy to do. You can crank out a bunch of these pretty easily. So when I lay this over the top, I'm hovering it over the top, I'm looking at the bottom of the door where the end of that arch ends, and I wanna make sure that that's lined up with the bottom of my house. I also wanna look at the windows as I'm coming down, and I wanna make sure that those are even, so they're spaced out. They have about the same amount of space on each side. Pressing that down firmly. Don't rock when you stamp. Okay, and then we can set our windows inside and our door inside. Um, I think I'm going to stamp one more thing though before we do that. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more of that chocolate swirly frosting between the roof and the windows. So we're going to stamp that up here like that. And that will allow us to hang our wreath above the door. Okay, so now let's flip all of these goodies over. <laughs> My fingernails aren't working today. And we're going to just drizzle a bit of glue on here. Again, the fine tip applicator is just so nice because you can, I mean, just like with the regular two-way glue that comes with the green cap, it's it's got a fine tip, you know, dis, uh, dispenser on it. It has this part here but sometimes it can be hard to just gently squeeze out enough. And this applicator here just really works for me. So I love using it. So we're gonna tape that above the door. Oh yeah, we're getting it onto our fingers. Tape, <laughs> put that inside our window. Rachel's gonna have to go wash her hands because she's getting glue all over herself. Oh my goodness sakes. And I'm I'm normally a very neat crafter. <laughs> purple, purple painter's tape, yes, for delicate surfaces. Thank you, I'm looking up and I'm seeing you guys talk about the, it's the purple stuff. The green stuff is the frog brand, right? And that's for painting. But the purple is the one that a lot of people are talking about for paper crafting. I wanna say that that's true. <laughs> Okay, so there's our house, yay. And then we're gonna take this piece and we're going to adhere it behind. And you can use the seal adhesive like a tape runner or you can just draw a little line of glue like that. Then you use your grid paper and you line it up. And I'm gonna hoist it up a little high here. Oops, keep that parallel, keep this parallel, there we go. And we'll set that off to the side. And now we're gonna wrap the belly band around our house. Okay, because this one, because I wanna let this sit and dry for a little bit longer, I am not going to actually put this one together. I'm gonna to grab a different box, which is why I have a bunch of them here. And we're gonna wrap around this one for now. But what I recommend is that you let your boxes dry and then you wrap your belly band or you can take and do your pearl pearlescent stuff which is what I did do that at the very end and set it aside to dry okay how do we put the boxes together so you've got these tabs here that already come with adhesive those are going to be the glue that you need so you're going to take your um, uh, take your pick tool or your fingernail and you're gonna slide it under there and remove all of these little tabs here these release papers on the tabs I should say save that tree we're gonna put that tree on in just a minute too okay then the window part of the box is the part that is going to um, be uh, separate we're not gonna we're not gonna glue that together as a box base that's gonna sit separately so let's kind of zigzag fold this so that it's kind of out of the way okay we've got it pushed out of the way we're gonna come in and let's do a crease with our bone folder because we really want to make sure that this is a nice crisp fold and then it sits straight instead of wobbling and bending out Okay, we want a nice straight fold. We want a nice straight fold on this piece too. Probably should have done all of this before removing the tabs. That's okay. Let's 
fold it this way, crease it down. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and grab this tab and you're going to push it in. And then you're going to line up this edge with that fold. Just like that. And it's very strong tape, so it's going to hold right away. And you're going to do that on all four corners. So the edge with the crease. And make sure that they're straight when you're doing it. You don't want to have it off too much or you might have issues with assembling and closing the box. Okay, now we're going to come in here and we're going to do our bone folder again on all three sides. If you don't do the bone folder step, it might not close very easily. Okay, so there's that. Now again on these two, same thing. You'll line it up. If you go beyond, if you go further in, the box might not close. So you want to be lined up with it, even if it can go in further. And then you can just come right down on top and it will close. Now these little guys will flare out, but that's what the belly band is for. It helps to, to hold it, okay? <laughs> so thank you, Shirley, for that reminder. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, if you'd give me the thumbs up, and if you would share the video. Thank you. All right, so now we can wrap the belly band around. We've got it started. We're going to continue that on. So wrap it to the back like that, and then we're going to use our adhesive to put this down. You can either use the glue that I've been using, or you can use like a tape runner glue if you want to. I'm just going to add a little bit of tape runner glue. Less messy. Rachel does not like getting messy. So we're going to add seal adhesive to that side and seal adhesive to this side. And you can put it almost to the edge where that crease is, but remember that it doesn't, the paper that's going to connect with it doesn't go all the way to that point. Okay, so let's connect one of them. And I'm leaving about a sixteenth of an inch exposed right here. So you can see from the score line to that edge of the cardstock, it's about a sixteenth of an inch. And then you'll end up with the same thing on this side, about a sixteenth of an inch. And that's a nice firm belly band, okay? It's going to be nice and firm, maybe too firm. Hang on a minute. There we go. We're going to slide that off. Slide it back on, get it to work a little bit, right? Oh no, that's good. That's good, that'll hold our fudge. <laughs> All right, this piece here is vellum. Adhesive sometimes shows through vellum, but I will tell you that I did not have an issue with the seal adhesive as long as I did a nice thin, you know, a nice straight line of it and it wasn't all bunched up on itself or whatever. I could not tell it was there. So it's up to you if you want to try to do sponged on multi-purpose glue all over the back side, which is one way I feel that hides the adhesive, or whether you want to just go with the seal at each end. And I, I'm opting for the seal. I'm also going to go through the middle because we are going to cover up that middle portion there. Okay, that middle portion is going to get disguised. We're going to lay this across the center and we're going to center it so that we see about a quarter of an inch of white on each end. So why did I not make this go all the way to the end? It's up to you. If you want to, you can. You can take and wrap the whole thing with that pretty uh, snowflake vellum. But I was trying to gift a lot of these to a lot of people. And so to make the most of it, I decided a six inch piece was all I needed. Okay, let's keep looking at our house here. We are going to take and add our house with dimensionals because they're popped up a bit. So you'll want to get make sure that you have this in your stash. This is dimensionals, um, dimensional adhesive, and it's a fun way to make an image pop up nice and high. And oops, don't want to do that. And oops, I think I have these too low. Rachel, Rachel, slow down. 
So this adhesive is going to go onto the belly band portion. There we go. So because it's going on the belly band portion, we want to put it just through the middle. <laughs> We're setting that fifth one aside. So right through the middle. Do you see that? It's going right through the middle of the house. I got dimensional happy all of a sudden. What happened? It was a Nancy that came out of me. <laughs> My friend Nancy loves using dimensionals. Okay, when I stick this on here, I want the house to be showing nice and clearly. So I want it to be in the space of the window. Okay, because it kind of has that darkness behind it that's showing it off. The tree is added with dimensionals as well. But these dimensionals are sort of on the big side. You have the choice of getting um, smaller dimensionals if you want to. You can get mini dimensionals. Um, because I'm showing just one set of dimensionals, I'm going to go ahead and just run a skinny portion cut from the edge onto the back side. But yes, mini dimensionals will totally work. And we're going to overlap the tree a bit and stick it down like that. This one was actually supposed to be, there we go, overlapped. Or did I have it behind? I don't know, maybe behind is better. Because you know what, the tree, we'll stick it behind. Because the tree is in the distance if it's up higher, Rachel. There, it's behind now. Oh, embellishments. We have some embellishments to add. So I'm going to bring in these fun little doodads. Okay, we have our red rhinestones, which you get a ton of these. You get 220 red rhinestones. These are lasting me a long time. So we're going to grab the sticky end of the take your pick tool and we're going to push and press to lift it up. Stick one on the wreath, two on the wreath, and three. And those will become the red berries of our wreath. They're a little bit bigger than the, um, the green dots that were there, but that's one way of multicoloring your wreath so that you have a green and red wreath. Okay, just do the red right on top. And then we need a door handle, and you could do that either with the pearlized enamel effects, or you could, like I said earlier, you could bring in the pearls. So these are our regular pearls. And if you wanted to, you could have the regular pearls accenting your box. So remember where we did this stuff here? So you could replace those areas with the regular pearls instead. Okay, when you're done, you have, and I'm just going to pull that off. We'll put this one back on here. When you're done, you have a box and a cute belly band and a mess on your table. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Again, these boxes, which come in a set of 10, are available through today still as a free choice at the $50 level. So it's a level one celebration choice. If you're in a different market, it's the level one. Um, I'm gonna bring in my celebration booklet here and show that to you, but here we go. Let's just, you know, I'm gonna set that over here like that. Kind of easier to see if my head's not in the way, right? All right, um, celebration. Let's talk about news real quick and then we'll go on to prizes. So celebration is the time of year, which is ending today, but it was July through August, um, where you can get free picks at the $50 level or free picks at the $100 level. Um, they have two different levels. This is the brochure that was originally re released at the beginning of July. But over time, we had a few things disappear quickly, sell out, quote unquote, even though they weren't getting sold. But um, we had these things go right away, the cards and envelope packs. I didn't even get to demonstrate them. Um, hippo dies are gone now. The hippo set, still cute. You don't necessarily need dies to use a stamp set, but those are available. And then there is one other item that sold out, oh gosh, a few weeks back. And that made a lot of sadness for some. Um, the tree lot dies are gone also. Then Stampin' Up! after the tree lot dies were disappearing 
quickly and some other things were starting to t deplete faster than they had predicted. They brought in items from the regular catalog that you could get for your free choices. And those included the foil packs of paper, embossing folder, dies, and these boxes. The foil boxes or the foil sheets are gone right now. They're that's not an option anymore, but we still have those choices. So you can look in the online store under um, under specials and then celebration to see what the choices are. If you um, have not shopped for Stampin' Up! products before, uh, any shop tab on my website at stampyourartout.com will get you to the online store. And again, then just click on specials and you'll be able to shop those products. You can also shop from the links in the description of my video, the description, uh, the list of supplies in the PDF that you'll be able to download, my, um, my blog post, that sort of thing. Now, if you have a demonstrator already, shop from them, spread the love. Um, if you're a demonstrator yourself, shop from yourself, get your discount. What else do I want to tell you? Um, if you are not a demonstrator and you want to be, you can get the starter kit for an awesome deal right now because not only is it $99 for up to $125 worth of product and free shipping, but you also get this Making Plans collection, which includes a beautiful planner that has all these kinds of things that you can continually fill. Um, it's got a stamp set, it's got three notebooks, sticker sheets, refillable pages, um, really pretty design. So that is the gift that is given, being offered right now during celebration. Other things that I want to mention, um, tomorrow, September 1st, Stampin' Up! is going to have some logo merchandise, uh, a couple new things added. So hang on just a minute. You know how they have um, logo merchandise like this in there? Well, they're going to put a hat in the collection of products and they're going to put a mug in the collection of products. So if you're, if you're loving that kind of stuff, you can certainly add that stuff to your order starting tomorrow, so September 1st. Also, um, and I'm going to peek here. I'm going to go to, because Rachel forgot, but hang on. It won't take me too long to remember. <laughs> oh, Valerie, that's so sweet. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have to read these comments right after this live is done because you are making me feel so good. Um, <laughs> sometimes you need that little lift up, right? Okay, uh, another thing. Oh yes, the weekly deals. That's the other thing I was like blanking on all of a sudden. Do you remember, if you've been a Stampin' Up! for a while, they've had these thing called, things called weekly deals in the past. They got rid of it, but they decided to bring it back for a month. So thanks, Ramona. So in September, on the 1st, on the 8th, um, and whatever the next two, <laughs> two Thursdays are after that. So every Thursday, they're going to replenish and they're going to have weekly deals. Every market's going to be a little different, so they don't have the deals for us ahead of time. Um, but you'll be able to check on the website starting tomorrow and you can see what specials will be available for weekly deals. So things that are discounted basically. Last week we had um, winners that were drawn and were gifted uh, the adhesive pack. Um, I have had really a lot going on, <laughs> not only my health with my foot, and my hair and some other things that I may have told you guys about. But um, we went to the fair yesterday and I have just really um, kind of not been in my normal set of mind lately. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, pick winners from the after live comments on YouTube and Facebook and I'm going to post them in my blog post. Does that sound good to you guys? So if your name shows up in my blog post that will go live at 12.15 in about 10 minutes, um, you can look for them there. So we're going to end this video quickly because I have to draw those names. And for the winners today, we're going to go with tutorials. Um, you get a choice of tutorials. Now I'm going to bring you over to my computer so that you can see what I'm talking about when I say tutorials. You get your choice. So if you, oops, that's not what I want. There we go. So if you're on my blog and you click on shop, 
Here, by the way, is my favorite extras that you can get to to find that little dispenser. You can find the magnetic sheets there, all that kind of thing. But if you go down one more and go to tutorials and then move over to the word tutorials, you can click on and see your choice of what you can get. Lots of different tutorials. There's pages of them. I mean, look down here. There's even more pages. So if you are a winner that Trisha draws from our live commenters, you will be able to pick a tutorial to get emailed to you for free. So thank you for watching everybody. I'm going to scroll through and see if she has drawn any winners. I'm gonna come back here too so that you guys aren't seeing my computer as I search. <laughs> All right, so Miss Trish is gonna draw those two winners today. Again, the winners from the after uh, live from last week, those will get posted in my blog posts. So you'll wanna come back and visit there. The comments keep on coming. There we go. So I'm going to keep peeking here to see if she has drawn those names. In fact, maybe I should just make that a regular thing. Put the winner's names in the blog post. I don't know. Would that help a lot of you? Because there are some of you who never claim your prizes. And it makes me so sad. Anyways, here's my email address. Make sure you reach out to me if you see um, your name drawn. So, Miss Trisha, I missed it. I must have missed it. I must have missed it. I don't know. Um, I can go back and look. But on that note, we are going to end the live. Next week, I'll be live with you again on September 7th, Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. There's the winners. She must have posted them and I missed them. Um, Michelle Nitz for you. Oh, Michelle Nitz for you. That's cute. And then Rosie Prouty. <laughs> Yay, Rosie, haven't you won before? Congratulations to you. When you win more than once, that means you're really lucky. <laughs> right? That's awesome. So you two are the winners. Make sure that you reach out to me at my email address and um, let me know what tutorial you would like. Congratulations to you all. Um, yeah, you might have to give me a minute on that blog post to get the names in there because it's already 12.09. Anyways, on that note, take care, everyone. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. <laughs> okay, bye.